bring everybody out of the mute zone. Hello. Sorry, my... I had a joke there, but my autocorrect instinct was to say, Welcome to the world of tomorrow! Which is a Futurama joke. That's right, Chad. I make those. But hello, no. Welcome to Fail Portrayal. From the deep beyond! And, uh, if it weren't Live Oak season, I could probably commit to trying to keep that voice up for more of this, but I can't. Because I'm feeling... Uh, I, I do not believe technically I am ill, but I feel a little sick right now uh, because the pollen. What, what, the pollen? Uh, Axe is here with me. He is also tired. Vesper I is not with I us. I didn't have sleep last night. <laughs> mm, yeah, I know that one. And then I would have to go to work half dead. Yeah. We don't need to go into to details. No, it's, I, I'm but... doing, I'm okay better now, but like yeah. I was expecting just to kind of, never mind. It's fine. No, I was just saying, I also like m Monday, uh, I didn't sleep so good. Hey, in case you were wondering chat, I did tweet about this, but uh, we didn't stream Monday because I was uh, really getting my ass kicked by allergies and Lucky had a, said he had a cough as well. Look, well, I think you're in between games. Yeah, it was, it was an okay break point. Uh, I think some people did actually listen to me and, and watch the MSG3 finale. Anyway, because uh, that's doing uh, pretty yeah. good for stream numbers. I did um, it the night of anyway. Yeah. Es especially because, uh, I, I haven't mentioned this before, but uh, it is currently uh, ineligible for monetization because of uh, the copyright bullshit. It's not even like Snake Eater. It's just somebody I think probably has like a, probably has like a copy troll on one of the fucking alert sounds or something. Um... But I can't edit it because the the stream is seven hours long. And you is like, we can't mute this. This is too big. We don't want to deal with it. And I'm like, okay, thanks, YouTube. Oh, they, they still haven't made the tool where you can just cut out the five second. I mean, no, oh. we can. It's just the stream is seven hours. And they're just like, no, nope, this is too big. We can't edit it. I'm like, okay, cool. Great. Then don't demon it. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's stupid, but we're here. Just... And in Fail Betrayal, which uh, is uh, legendarily, for some reason not demonetized, even though there are times, chat. Anyway, uh, Vesper's not here with us right now. They're, uh, you know, in personal Press time. Down. It's fine. They're doing stuff. Uh, Loth is asleep right now, and he should uh, be very careful. If he's sleeping gently like a baby... Oh, I think he we'll, should. We'll, he barely we'll, gets sleep anyway. I mean, it's true. He, he, it's been summer for him, so he's been sleeping like shit because no country no, but has America no has central <laughs> air. I don't know how the fuck we won that lottery. No, I, no, I, no if it turns out, it's just, it's just that he doesn't have a place that's wealthy enough to have central air. I mean, yes, no, but, like, that even, even, I have, I have lived temporarily in prefab homes, trailer houses that have had, like, either, like, built-in side AC or window AC units. Like, that, I just don't, I don't understand. It's just an American thing, I guess, to, like, no, no, we're going to cram air conditioning in everything. I mean, mine's mine not that bad. I, I, just, I, have a, I just have a desk fan, and I have like a, I have like one like those really good like heater units that can like it is really good for set, like heating. Uh, the I have like like, the entire room, like so. four fans for when it's uh, when it's hot, uh, which like I, I said, I am, I am feeling a little. Uh, 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 like I said, I don't I don't think I'm literally ill because I haven't been out of the house much. Well, it's been the temperature's been no, all over just, the place, I just, but I just I just yeah I feel I feel a little feverish because I'm sure there's pollen packed into my sinus, but so I got a lot of fans going. Uh, if you're curious, by the way, chat, while we're still goofing around and have been for five minutes, um, uh, when it's uh, cold, uh, how I heat my room is I uh, leave my, my electronics all on. I don't Mega, need a space heater. A, uh, let me go dig this up, but I think I want to, as the as the classic uh, Fail Patrol staple, I'm going to get you a thing, but under the text, under the chat. The moment is I dig it the hell up. Oh, also, I, 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 I've not actually said what uh, archetype we're doing today. I've, I've shown it on screen, and I've, I've made some jokes. But, uh, yes. I, it's good that you thought to grab this, and I may show this on screen, but uh, I did already know this one, because, hey, everybody, today we're talking about the fish archetype. Now, you may be wondering, chat, if you don't get the joke, uh, why the, the text box at the top says goti, uh, and I say it's pronounced fish. Uh, so, this is actually, like, you want to talk about, like, 
funny world premiere, you know, TCG exclusive archetype names. Uh, goatee, which for the sake of my brain making sense, we will say goatee. It is actually written in the OCG when they translated it. They did not. It's funny, actually, by the way. We got them back for once. Uh, we had the untranslatable wordplay. Um, in the OCG, this is just called Gotisu. Uh, they, like, they literally have, didn't they bother. Have to, they literally have to, like, loan it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they were just like, I, okay, I no, this, we're just going to... I love this archetype so much that uh, my Starfinder character, who is a uh, space-traveling guide, is a goatee. At least that's the name of his race. Uh, and in my own card game-based setting, I have literally a little... I have a central location be a lake that has basically called... Uh, it's called Cherrywood Goateeing. It's called Fishing. Everyone gets angry if you say Goateeing. <laughs> That's good. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this is the image Axe got and provided in the chat. If you are curious how this worked out, the word Goatee was proposed as a alternate pronunciation and alternate spelling of fish because by a couple of English experiment. writers. As uh, an experiment. Just yeah. Show. As, as basically like a, a, a personal, you know, joke on English pronunciation to see if we could, you know, get it to stick. It didn't really, but I, I'm sure this has been, you know, many uh, uh, college professor gags, uh, you know, thrown around at a few parties, all probably on some, some Jeopardy runs. But yeah, so specifically, it's supposed to be the G sound like in enough or tough, so it's the F. Uh, the O as in women, which is short I, because we don't pronounce it woman. And then the T as in nation, which is similar to sh, though I will say the, I think the T I ch and the S H sh are like slightly different, but that's you know like a regionalism and accents thing. So honestly, this feels speaking, like this this is a gag that feels like it was started by a circle of college professors who do translations. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Um, or a, just it reminds me of like how chemistry majors sometimes English talk about how like teachers yeah. chemicals just sometimes just spontaneously combust because they can. <laughs> But yeah, so it's each. So uh, we will not be bothering to, like I said, keep the pronunciation consistent. I think everybody I like has. The, I like the word goat. <laughs> yeah, no goat. Especially for the the uh, future naming conventions, uh, which is, by the way, if you don't know, um, all of the names of the goatee monster cards are usually uh, anagrams or otherwise rearranged. Um, they're not universally words for fish. Some of them are uh, adjacent, like uh, Keef is probably a uh, you know, anagram of fake. Uh, Paces is a anagram of uh, both space and also pesca, which is the verb for fishing in romance languages. Stuff like that. But Again, it, it, it it's, it's all fish-related that... stuff. It, it gives the impression that these are uh, deep sea anomalies that people just they look like fish so that's what they put on the tag yeah. that's what they tagged them it's uh, like Rob the vacuous spider I may yeah very much like Rob the vacuous spider I may or may not try and grab images of the animals that these are clearly based on but um, they're usually based on either deep sea fish or just or fish. really interesting uh, fish that are drawn in kind of a, a, a cosmic space you know effect because uh, one of them is just a guppy but they, they, they have several, uh, I think, iconic, uh, you know, designs for stuff as we go through them. Also, as someone that has recently looked into white point, I, I did the point as I said yes. that, uh, because we have to, because we have yeah. brain worms. Or I guess we have the brain fish, but uh, because <laughs> they, can, they, can, they can banish them. So they, can, they go, they hide the banishment. <laughs> Careful, don't make me laugh too hard. I still got a little bit, a little bit of chest congestion. Uh, I mean, it, will, it could be good for you, man. It'll cough it all up. <laughs> <laughs> It'll return my lungs from the banishment. Yes, because they all hide in the banishment. And because of this, unlike the white... Pregnant pause. Uh, you have to... Uh, this deck actually is self-sufficient, plus other few state things here or there of, like, I think firefish and a few other yeah. just fish nonsense. So, the... It actually, the... it's just unsustainable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the... The title I used for the stream, Teach the Fish to Sink or Summon, is a very old-fashioned Yu-Gi-Oh joke. I don't know exactly, a, like, when it's from. I know that, like, MBT and SEMO have used line. it to reference to the, uh, the, like, Deep Sea Coelacanth era, uh, which is somewhere in the Sinker era. So it, is it around Edison? I don't remember. I'm a little cooked right now, chat. But the, f the phrase about you know, teaching the fish to synchro summon was, there was actually a fish synchro build back in the, the 5Ds day. 
days. I forget the city of the yeah, because it's like see the camp, and I think it was. It, I don't think it was played during Edison, but it was viable at Edison, so that's why it became an Edison format. Yeah. It reminds me of the jank thing of like all of the wind fish, like the wind fish, and like that's so bad. Yeah. But it at least lets the thing of fish are, uh, if they're not sharks, are very much associated with. If they're a shark, they're associated with seas. Yes. But if they're not a fish, they're associated with banishment. Yes, and also generally with synchro means, summoning. Which ironically means is actually the base of that is actually is the idea of reincarnation synchro summoning of being the idea is the fish basically spiritually go through the banishment and back to the field by becoming something bigger. Yes. Uh, I also think that in in this case which the the goatee specifically the... have to deal with um, the somewhat it's, old it's school based. but the the classic idea that the banishment the 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 banished zone is either like it's... outer space or a different dimension this is why i think or a lot of psychics time. involved with banishment obviously there's the classic d dot d not d slash d you know those kinds of things but yeah so there's uh some very you know fun stuff going on here uh i did actually grab because the archetype of monsters for uh White fish and white aura are pretty small. I do have that list in the back in case we power through these, but I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what what we'll be be chilling at exactly because, like I said, I'm I'm still a little under the weather, and it's particularly under the weather in my respiratory area, which uh, impacts my ability to use to speak. But let's see. Uh, tech, so technically, alphabetically, Keith is actually the first, but that is a uh, later support card. That card literally just came out. So we'll we'll grab that guy later. But uh, this is a deck uh, we mentioned it before, but this is a deck that focuses on synchro summoning and uh, banishing itself and returning from banishment. Uh, especially, I believe a lot of their tuners, uh, not all of them, I think. It's been a while since uh, they have a lot of tuners, and it's been a while since I name read every single effect. But uh, many of them have the ability to summon themselves back during the sta during either standby phase and possibly Synchro Summon on your opponent's turn for Interruption, which is a very, uh, fairly unique space to be in. Like I said, there's a lot of pre-existing support for generic fish Synchro, basically. Like, there's this whole sub-theme with the White Aura monsters, which can be very good to Synchro into on your turn, uh, and a few other interesting places. And so there is uh, definitely room for this. Uh, there's also the uh, the Deep Sea line, like Deep Sea Diva, and all the other associated uh, cards with that. So Fish plus Synchro uh, is pretty decent. I will say it's fun. I do like that even though... Um, let's, let's grab our first card out here. Let me let me pull up uh, Paces just so we have something to, to look at besides this fairly normal image. Um, but uh, despite how space these guys look, they are still waters, which I do appreciate that they're like... We can deliver you this aesthetic, but we can prevent goofing this up with any weird legacy support by just saying they're water fish. Even in space. Because space is an ocean, didn't you know? So yes, this is Paces, hey, Light of the Goshi. The I, I just love, yeah. like, it's not gelatinous, but it's more of, like, crystalline fluid. Yes, it's very cosmic. Um... I don't know how much you at home chat have ever looked at both deep sea fish and deep space photography. Uh, this really, I don't know what, like what effect the artist used, but it really captures that because like it gets very soft to retain weight. Yes, because um, it's got that kind of like translucency that a lot of deep sea creatures have with the bioluminescence, but a lot of this like murky, cloudy shading resembles a lot of like see clouds. Uh, you can even see some rocks and stuff in the back. Now, it's interesting um, because these, you know, you got the little eyes and stuff. Uh, this guy, Paces, is based on, uh, visually based on a Dumbo octopus, which I will very briefly show. Uh, oh, boy, this is going to be... Oh, no, it's not. I thought I was scared for a second it would be big. No. Uh, looks like this. This is a Dumbo octopus. Derpy. Yeah, they're just, they're just silly little guys. Um, though, um, I personally would, uh, never, you know, like, insult any species of octopus to their face, because, uh, they octopuses might are that, scary smart. Uh, they might not understand what you say, but they'll understand you probably said something bad about them. Yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, known as Dumbo Octopuses, uh, their, uh, technical name is Grimpotuthis. Um, 
this is a species which, by the way, we have, you know, uh, discovered and, and taxonomy, you know, uh, f recently, within the past, you know, 100 years or so, uh, hence why they're called Dumbo Octopus. That is indeed a direct reference to Disney's 1941 Dumbo. Because they've got little, little weird ear fins over their eyes. But yes, yeah, so, uh, Paces... Uh, at the moment, I don't actually have a lot to, to say about Paces in particular, other than just liking its general look and uh, mentioning that it is a Dumbo octopus. I think we will have some slightly different commentary as we go through the variations. But Paces is a level 2 water fish tuner. Uh, it is 0-0, zero, zero, as I believe most of their level 2 tuners are, uh, if not all of them. But th they've got some some sub-themes with the, the math in the stats that we can uh, talk about later, but... Uh, Paces says, you can banish this card you control. Especially summon a fish monster from your hand, except Paces. So just instantly this, you know, banishes itself to set up and also gets you another fish. Uh, during the standby phase of the next turn after this card was banished, you can special summon this banished card. During your opponent's main phase, if this card was special summoned this turn, you can, quick effect, immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon a fish synchro monster using this card you control. You can use each effect of Paces once per turn. There it is, chat. There's the entire archetype. Uh, this card banishes itself to get a secondary effect off. During the standby phase of the next turn, it comes back. Uh, after it was banished, period. This also means, by the way, if your opponent banishes these cards for some reason, you get them back in your standby anyway. Um, and then during your opponent's main phase, uh, you have a quick effect to sink or summon. It's all there. Uh, also, I should uh, mention that uh, Goatee is a archetype that has uh, played a little with compatibility. I would say it's probably currently rogue, though admittedly right now most decks are rogue. Mm -hmm. But um, I was not able to get like hard and fast stats of like what place they were in, but there were uh, YGOPRODECK.com. Please sponsor us. Uh, but uh, they. Uh, they have some tournament results, and I don't know, again, like, how far Goatee made it without getting deep in the weeds, but there were a couple of pretty big WCQ tournaments where there were Goatee deck lists being posted. So, like, it's being played at competitive events and presumably getting some decent pulls. Uh, it also, by the way, funnily enough, uh, is, because uh, we talked about this last week a little, uh, is apparently making its way in uh, China. There were some uh, Chinese tournaments, because uh, their meta is, is very odd, where uh, we're... Some people were playing some goatee decks. Uh, the, the, the. It's funny. The the OCG Japanese name just gave up. The uh, Chinese name for this archetype is Yo Yu, uh, which means literally like swimming you monster. But um, the character they use is a partial homophone for fish, so it like invokes the idea of a swimming monstrous fish, a giant fish. So they actually managed to get, like, the pun across, which is very fun. But yeah, Pace is uh, a key element of the deck. Uh, like, it's its effect to just summon another fish monster from your hand is good. It really depends on, like, what generic fish engine you're playing. I will say that I appreciate that, like we said, in general, um, for the most part, uh, Goatee merely locks you to fish type. Fish is a very big typing. Uh, out of, I think, the the classic water threesome of uh, Aquafish Sea Serpent, I think Fish might be the largest. And if it isn't the largest, I think that Fish probably has the most consistent play style. Like we said, you can play both uh, Sharks as Fish Xyz, and you can play um, Fish Synchro. In addition to, uh, let me see, are there any other famous Fish archetypes that I'm not remembering? Besides, obviously, like, sharks, whites, goatee. Uh, let's see. Fishborg is entirely based around synchro summoning. And hers are, like, like I said, they're, like, a, not their own thing, honestly. Yeah. put it. Uh, but, yeah, fi fishborg cards are, are you know, fish, uh, fish monsters that are based around summoning. There are some just generic abyss cards that are kind of a series. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's kind of... Uh, it for some of your primary. Uh, it's it's mostly Fishborgs, Goatees, and Whites, which are all synchro-based. And then you see Fish mixed in. There are apparently some uh, non-Fish Sharks. 
which I'm not super, uh, you know, like, freaked out about. But yes, uh, this is my next card art. Uh, we're going to pull up... <coughs> uh, this is Ruby. Oh, not Ruby. This is, this is Schiff. That's right. Zep is the Ruby of the Sea. This is Schiff, fairy of the goatee. Quite beautiful. Uh, Schiff is just fish. Uh, I got my confused because the animal it's based off of is the sea angel, uh, which are one of those... Let me see how huge this image on Wikipedia is. Uh, pretty big, but also fairly normal. Uh, sea angels are these uh, weird translucent things in the deep sea. Also, uh, please hold for a second. I'm going to turn off my microphone and uh, cough a little. Sorry about that. Didn't want to make you hear my gross throat clearing noises. Okay. Schiff, which is an anagram for fish. It is a sea angel. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, obviously, I think uh, because it's the real life animal is translucent. Uh, and in, in some cases, some areas of it are straight up transparent. I think this looks a lot more true to to life than the uh, paces as the Dumbo octopus did. But still, yeah, it's very good. Um, I do like that you've kind of got the suggestion of a little, a little adorable little face in there. Oh yeah. I think I, that's just where the like the the dot pattern lines up. But it kind of looks like I eyes. Think it's just, I, I think it's just the bloom. Yeah, it's just because the artist did a very good job of like lining up these features to be like there's a little face. Yeah, I, I like that it has kind of like almost like it has a claw, but it's more of just like vestigial, like like I guess like sash like wing fins. Yeah, it's got, you know, it's flowing uh, fins, which are very wing-like. It's got, like, a lotus crown, and it's got, like, devil horn. Yeah. So, like, it's, like, it's it's very much fish-like, but it's, like, just <clears throat> not archaic, but it's just, like... It's a little, yeah, it's a little weird. It's, it's, it's like a fish, it's but it's... Arcane. Yeah, it's arcane. arcane's a good word. It's it's very obscure. It's not Eldritch, it's arcane. Uh, but that works for deep sea as well as deep space, as we said. Yes. So, uh, the Schiff is another level 2 water tuna fish, obviously. Uh, this one is 0 attack, 500 defense. So, yeah, I think most of the level 2s have a 0 and 1 stat, but it's not universal. They're 0 0. Uh, so, the Schiff, Fairy of the Goatee, says you can banish this card from your graveyard, target a fish monster you control, it gains 500 attack until the end of this turn. During the standby phase, after this was. Banish, you can special summon it back. You also have the mean phase, quick effect to synchro summon it. You can only use each effect once per turn. Uh, Shift is probably the dead weight in this archetype. Because it's banished from graveyard effect is not a quick effect, obviously. So there are going to be times when you're going to be going first on the rip to set up to interrupt on your opponent's turn. And you have to activate its effect to banish itself for basically nothing. You know? Now, obviously, like, these these guys themselves, the goatees, don't have a uh, super high attack stat. So, like, you know, the damage modulation, is the, or I should say the attack modulation is helpful. But it's, it's definitely, like, I feel like I said, one of the dead weights. Like, this is a name you cut down to, like, maybe one just so you have an extra name and let some of the other uh, level twos breathe. Like, Paces is basically just free extension on a normal. Um, our next card, I believe, is also... Uh, yeah, this was part of the, the... Our next card's part of their second wave. Uh, I mentioned it, I alluded to it earlier, but I should say, uh, for the record chat, this was a uh, world premiere archetype, so this came out in the TCG first and then eventually to the OCG. It did suffer from a problem that a lot of world premiere archetypes come out where the first wave was solid, but obviously could have used some more gas. And then the second wave came out and it was like, yeah, okay, it's a complete archetype now. It's not like overtuned, so it's not like immediately, you know, taking home the meta, but it's not undercooked either. So, you know, we'll, we'll continue to see how that uh, shakes out. Um, it is a recurring theme. Um, a lot of people do get overhyped over one half of a world premiere archetype. 
Uh, eventually, I think that hype does die down naturally. Uh, hey, looking at you, uh, Ashened. Uh, people were, like, fucking nuclear for that deck because they did the Leonardo DiCaprio pointing meme about Dark Souls. Um, and, like, oh, they have a, a, a level 4, a lower pyro. They have a bonfire target. And then people have actually been playing in the, the fire format. And they're like, hmm, actually, uh, this doesn't beat uh, Fire King Snake Eyes, actually. This is uh, bad, probably. Uh, I suspect we're hopeful. I may talk about the OCG list a little bit later, but I, I don't know how, like, I don't know if you've looked at it, X. I uh, don't know how plugged in our audience is to it. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to guess that knowing the way these things work, uh, the TCG, when they get around to firing the ban list, which will, uh, by the way, in case you can't count, uh, probably won't be until at least uh, a couple of weeks into April because our last ban list was Janu went into effect January 1st. It was announced earlier, but it went into effect January 1st. And it says the next ban list will not be for a few more months. A few is three or four. Um, and if I was Konami, I would not be posting ban lists anywhere near April 1st. That just sounds like a bad idea. Don't do that. So um, it'll probably be a little bit before you see it. But uh, depending on how spicy Konami feels, uh, it could it will probably be more strict than the OCG. Uh, for one, I don't think if if we're gonna do anything about SP Little Light over here, it's not gonna go to two. Literally everybody plays SP Little Light at two at most anyway. Why? But it one at least affects. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that affects the extra deck math. It's the it's not a card people played at three. I don't understand. Is it like? Sometimes I wonder if the OCG uses the, the limited and semi-limited part of the list as, like, you know, yellow cards in soccer. Like, they're warning you, hey, you better stop playing this card so much, otherwise we're going to get rid of it. We're going to put it to one. Then you'll see how you like it. I don't know. Um, it certainly seems like there are times when the TCG is just like, no, actually, we're not asking you to stop playing this deck. We're telling you to stop playing this deck. Agito Band. You will stop playing tier limits. And then everybody said, bet. Uh, as, hey, uh, shocking, I know. Uh, I've seen several several tier and several cash decks in the Duelist Cup and Master Duel still. It's a little insane. But uh, let's, let's grab our next card out real quick. But, uh, yeah, so uh, this came from our second wave of support, Zep, Ruby of the Goatee. Uh, that's... A re rearrangement of Pez, which is Spanish for fish. Uh, Zep here resembles uh, a spiny lionfish. Uh, technically, the uh, scientific name is Teroys or Terrorus. I don't actually know. If it's Latin, is it is it Paterois? Paterois? It's spelled a little weird. Anyway, we we commonly call them lionfish, probably be to avoid this uh, confusion. <laughs> I enjoyed the glass, and there's a continuous, like, red and, like, I guess, uh, ice, yeah, kind of a, like, kind glass, of a... like, ice, yeah. like, ice glass. Yeah, they're kind of, like, they're doing a good job of showing that these creatures are translucent or transparent, um, without necessarily making them literally transparent PNG, so we use a lot of, like, white or clear colors, which is very glass-like, yes, I should, I should clarify. But yeah, um, this is based on a lionfish, so I think that's why it's got kind of the the uh, banded look to it, the little dotted lines and the, the color striations. And also uh, a few of these, you know, uh, weird shooting star type spines. Uh, if you don't know anything about lionfish, those are, in real life, real lionfish. Poisonous barbs! So watch out for that if you see a lionfish. Uh, but I do like that because this is a... What you call it? You know, a, a poisonous or venomous creature in real life. Uh, they have, you know, warning colors and banded designs. Um, and so Zep also has, you know, some of that vibe. But yeah, so uh, the Zepster came out in Darkwing Blast. This was the second drop of support. So you've got yet another Chuna. This one's level two, as with the others we talked about. It is zero attack and 1,000 defense. Uh, it says you can banish this card from your hand, target a fish monster in your graveyard, banish it. During your opponent's turn, you can special summon it back, and then during your... Uh, 
All right, rather, sorry. Uh, this is, if this card is special summoned, you can immediately synchro summon both her once per turn. So Zep does actually change things up a little. Um, it, it is not during the standby phase specifically. It's just any time during your opponent's turn, if it's banished, you can special summon it. And if it's special summoned, uh, except during the damage step, you can synchro summon. This means you can synchro summon even in the battle phase, not during damage step, obviously, but even during the battle phase, you can summon it back and synchro summon, which is good because your other couple of tuners didn't do that yet. Um, this banishes from hand to banish an extra fish from your graveyard, which shouldn't be too hard to set up. Fish also have a lot of... Uh, how would you say this? Uh, they've got a lot of, like, discard fodder, I think, and even some graveyard binning. Like, I believe Coelacanth, you know, is discard to summon fish, stuff like that. So, Zep, you know, lets you uh, target out your own guys. Uh, also, I, I think, I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but I think because this says uh, this is a then effect, I think you can, you might be able to banish it without a target because it says you can banish this card, then target a fish monster in your graveyard. But it is mandatory, not uh, optional, so it may not be permissible. Not sure. But it's still good to have a hand banish effect. So you've got, you know, uh, between this uh, paces and shift, you've got, you know, banish from your field, banish from your graveyard, banish from your hand. And the special summon condition is, is slightly different. So I suspect that you would probably run, you know, uh, maximal... Uh, Paces and Zep, probably like one shift, uh, and maybe some of uh, our next guy. Uh, so, uh, assuming this art is correct, this one's also going to be bigger, by the way, because uh, this guy's not in Master Duel yet. But uh, like I said, this card literally just came out like last month. It was in Phantom Nightmare. This is Keef Merc of the Goatee. Uh, Merc, also possibly like Lurk. Uh, it says Keef as in a represents for fake because guess what? This is an angler fish. The real fish is behind. And it's very ominous. That's that, that's the space horror right there. Yeah, no, this is we're we're going uh full blown into the cosmic horror now. Like this is this is some shit you run into in Spelljammer right here. Uh oh yeah. Um, I, I do like the much more ominous coloration. Like, this is a thing that a few of the goatee do have where they uh, kind of do the the bones on the outside or the bony outline. So, you know, got like a big long skull. But even then, the skull probably looks fake because you've got the lights down here. Like, these are its eyes. Um, the design on the lure is very good with kind of like the, the bright light and like a moon crescent in there. And you can see, obviously, the line up at the top, you know, branching off. So it's like, as as, as like a submarine, Keef, you know, hides out in the backdrop. But yeah, it's very good. This this is a good good art remix. <clears throat> uh, and I think one of their other cards may um actually like give you a better look at it. I think one of their traps does. Uh, this is that's one thing I will say for this archetype that's weird. Uh, as far as I know, I think they have only like one spell card, which is their field spell. That's what I use for the thumbnail. We'll talk about it later. Um, the the rest of their spell trap support is all traps, oddly enough. Uh, there are a lot of good generic fish uh, spell cards, which is probably why, or like water cards, like um, big wave, small wave, salvage, shit like that. But it's still interesting that they don't have any archetype spells other than their... Um, Field spell, which isn't even name checked, you know. <clears throat> but yes, uh, the Keefster is another uh, level two uh, fish tuner. Actually, no, it's not. It's a non-tuner. It's only a non-tuner. Uh, so it's a level two fish. It has zero attack and fifteen hundred defense. If there is a fish monster on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. If a fish monster. <clears throat> Sorry. If a monster is special summoned to your opponent's field, except during the damage step, target one of those monsters and one of your banished or level six or lower fish monsters. Banish both that opponent's monster and this card. If you do special summon your targeted monster during the standby phase of the next turn after this card's banished, you can special summon it. You can only use each effect of Keef once per turn. So yeah, uh, first of all, Keef is just free extension. 
if there's a fish anywhere on the field, it's a free special. Uh, so this lets you set up your synchro plays a lot easier. Also lets you get into links, and if you wanted to do rank 2 stuff. Um, which, like, I don't think people were playing Goatee Sprite, but, like, you could make an argument for. Because um, there are some of the... Uh, there's, like, the Nimble card. Is it Nimble Angler that's a, a, a fish? And I know that Nimble Beaver is, like, water. So there's, there's some interesting tech in this. Um, I also just like the fact that this is, like... If an opponent's mon if your opponent special summons a monster, so long as you have a banished level six or lower fish monster, you could just like yeet that guy out of reality. <laughs> um, it is targeted, so like you have to use it carefully, but still like this is a very funny karma cut basically, <laughs> because you get to special summon back one of your uh, one of your medium sized fish six or lower. Well, that's one you can search. Yeah. No, so it's like this is. This is very funny to me, the way this works. Um, again, right now, do I think this will make Goatee more than Rogue? Probably not without some banlist adjustments just to make... To make... Uh, uh, like... Snake Eyes decks, like, less super good. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, uh, it's still very funny to me. I, I love the idea that your you know your opponent is just uh, you know minding their own business. They summon a guy, and this guy's like, "Oh, what a cute fish!" And they just get fucking eaten, slurped up into the deep beyond. All right, so now we're gonna start climbing levels. Uh, I believe none of the main deck monsters who are higher than level two are tuners, but we'll see. Uh. But Keith definitely giving you a level two non tuner lets you access some uh, some four axis stuff with with synchro. Uh, and our next card is Ixip, Omen of the Goatee. Uh, this is a <clears throat> this is a uh, anagram for I assume that's Pietche. Uh It's an X, so there's no way it's Piexi. Uh That's Portuguese for fish. Pisi. I assume it sounds like Pisces because that's the Latin for fish. Probably. Also, just look at all of, like the floating bits. Yeah. No, I like, I like this a lot. Um, truly ethereal. Yeah. Uh, it has a the the wiki says it's got a design like a guppy. I do think that it's got a guppy like tail, but the way it's got this like fan fin around it, uh, that's very unique. Um, and I do like the like literally parts of the fin are levitating. Also, like. Also, all the bits onto its fan bit too, so it's like yeah. It it, 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 it kind of reminds me of like the spaceship, like some like spaceship spaceship designs that like they yeah. have like long fin fan fins like that for like like a solar sail uh, or something. But yeah, it's it's nice that yeah. it's um it is the angle's a little weird because I think these are like dorsal and ventral. They're on the back and and below, but that's the artist making sure you can actually see it. Uh, I do like the extra like eye lights. Um, and the fact that, once again, you can see the skeleton in there. You know, deep-sea fish don't have light at all other than bioluminescence, so there's a lot of stuff going on. But yeah, it's very good. Uh, so Ixip is your uh, uh, only level 4 for now. Uh, 4 probably is a good way to go in. Uh, and definitely, again, talking about, like, the archetype needing a little help. This was also in Darkwing Blast, so this was the second block of support. Uh, I can definitely see having a, uh, a, a non-tuner normal summon is good for the, the backup. Uh, how would I nurse Snake Eyes? I mean, the OCG is starting on it. They're just half-assing it as usual. Probably Diabelle start a 1. Uh, let me actually pull up the OCG list. Basically, my version is everything that's on the OCG list that, like, only went to two is probably go to one, and the stuff that went to one is probably banned. One step or, or I guess, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't actually know if, if Amber Whale has anything to do with... You know, I mean, I know it exists, but, like, that's not really a big deal. Yeah, so they went, uh, uh, Seeker Sinful Spoils to one. They put Ash to, uh, and Kirin to two. 
and that was it. Uh, so yeah, no, definitely like probably uh, ban Seeker, Sinful Spoils straight out, and limit Ash and Kirin to one. Uh, possibly limit Diabell Star to one because I know that like having played against and done a little crafting with with Snake Eyes decks, they're very loopable. Um, I actually think like Ambo wheels it. Like I mean, if if you're concerned about cards that have, that that came out, you know, uh, five years ago, that are that are easily bannable, uh, yeah, sure. But uh, Ambo Whale is only really a problem if you're like link climbing, um, and you kind of do that because of Promethean Princess, but also you don't like. Promethean Princess can fucking special summon itself back anyway. Yeah. Like, it, it already has the ability to come back. But no, I probably wouldn't bother hitting Amblo Whale. That's not actually, like... I have literally... N I, I know that... I'm sure they do do it. I've literally never seen a Snake Eyes player summon Amblo Whale. I... Usually we just get to Promethean Princess. Um, no, the problem of the deck is their their like constant uh, juicing of of you know uh, resources, which probably limiting sinful spoils and ash would probably be part of it. But uh, let's see, Ixie, yeah, we're on Ixie. Uh, so Ixie is a level four, fifteen hundred attack, zero defense. So kind of you know going the other way with it. Uh, this does mean that if you used shift, it would be 2k. Uh, it says, if a fish monster is banished, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. During the standby phase of the turn after this card is banished, target one of your goatee traps that is banished from your graveyard. Set it. You can use each effect of Ixheap once per turn. So, this is why I say that, like, obviously they have a lot of inherent specialing, but this deck could probably use more normals because it's just kind of a guy... It does get back your traps, which, like I said, are, are part of your archetype, is all your different trap stuff. But, you know, it, it's just when banished, it sets one of your traps back. Uh, I mean, it's cute that it gets them out of banishment. That's neato. Um, and it's good that it's basically free special summoning. But it's still a, a part of the, the process. Uh, and now our next blocks should, like, all be sixes. Because basically we go two, four, six. All right, so first up we have Ianok, Sentry of the Goti. Uh, so uh, this is an anagram for Ocean. Uh, and we're starting to get a little spookier. Uh, this is very clearly a very large ray. Uh, you even got, like, little remoras uh, attached to it, which also look, you know, kind of like missiles. Uh, I love, like, the big skull work that's kind of, you know, blends into its rib cage. Uh, some of these designs are going to give me a lot of uh, big uh, Subnautica vibes. There are literally uh, fish in... Subnautica called Ghost Rays, which do look a lot like this, so they have more uh, skeletal wings than they do rib cages. But yes, this is a uh, big skeletal boy with little, little trailer lights. Oh, interesting. Sorry, I was confused. Did I say this wrong? No, it's just in the uh, OCG. They call it uh, defender of the Gotis. Interesting. I, I like the interest, like the weird like layering to it. Yeah, there. Oh, like, you know, we're showing you a little depth because it's a you gotta you gotta communicate scale. There's also a thing of like there's a weird variety of like ones that are more like gelatinous crystal and others that are just like more like meteoric bone. Well, yeah, they have, you know, we're playing with with real-life types here, so you've got, you know, translucent bodies, which in real deep-sea fish are mostly water, you know, um, and then, you know, bones, because I'm pretty sure it's hard for, for bone structures to uh, form transparent. 
So yeah, you got that that interesting interplay. So Enoch uh, is a level six fish, water, twenty one hundred attack, zero defense. If this card is normal or special, target one of your banished level four or lower fish monsters, special summon in defense position, but negate it. You can banish a fish from your hand or face up field, add a goatee trap from your deck to your hand. You're going to use each effect of Enoch once per turn. This is probably why they haven't come out with um, spell spell card support. Um, I do want to say, dear Konami, don't do that. This should say spell trap. I know that you didn't print any spells, but you should future proof. You've been doing this card game for 25 years. You should know better and future proof. Admittedly, that does mean that they can give them another card that, like, searches spells or spell traps, but, um, yeah. Uh, Enoch's still good. Like I said, this deck's pretty easy to special summon guys out on, you know. Um, and I like that its effects are triggered if it is normal or specialed. It's got a pretty decent body, and it's, you know, lets you immediately bring back one of your banished uh, fish monsters to set up for a synchro play if you've banished a tuner. Uh, for instance, if you summon paces, you banish paces, use that to special Enoch, Enoch can immediately bring back paces, and then you can make a sync 8. It all kind of flows together. Um, and like I said, banish, banishing fish monsters just gets you plenty more material. It's ready to rock. Okay, uh, I've, I've got to double check. How does the OCG try to say this? Huh? Okay, is this supposed to be pronounced? Sorry, uh, this is another leader support, but I'll grab it in there. Yeah, no, um, because uh, Sword Souls are generic, you can actually run uh, Sword Soul extra deck stuff in there. Uh, si anything that, that, that is, you know, good for syncing on your turn, because there's only... Four uh, synchro names for goatees that are name checked, and then there's about four white auras, uh, some of whom are not good, you know, uh, on your opponent's turn. Okay, so this is the, the card art. Let me grab this. Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to pronounce this guy. Uh, this is another card that just came out. We got another bit of support, but we'll throw it in here here because I'm getting tired of spending time and space. So if I can trust. The OCG, this is supposed to be pronounced basically psychics. It is spelled P-S-I-I-C-S. Uh, like I said, the OCG writes this as Saikusu, so Psyx. Um, but you know, Psyx, Moonlight of the Go Goatee. Uh, so this is another new one that just came out in Fainter Nightmare. This is a another level six fish. It's got twenty four hundred attack, zero defense. You know, because they're it's level the sixes, they can have have some good one. Uh, it's grabbing a paces, I believe, because that looks like a Dumbo octopus. But yeah, this is basically uh, Psychics is basically a a bigger anglerfish. I guess it's going with the idea they're both are heavily two life forms. They're just symbolically connected. Yeah, it. It may be that uh, that uh, Keef, which is fake, is supposed to be like its head thing. You know, the, it, the, it the small be the Eska. Type of creature, yeah. um, but, you know... It's so fucking terrifying. Yeah, it, I know. It is, uh, it, Psychics is metal. Metal as hell. I guess it has actually has eyes, but it's more of like they're invisible, I guess. Yeah, if it has eyes, they're just the deep dark sockets. Or maybe it doesn't have eyes and doesn't need them because, you know, the fucking... Uh, you know, space. Uh, but it's got, like, a big bony jaw. It's got, like, the cross-shaped cross fins. It kind of, like, again, talking about that, that you've mentioned before, that kind of, like, crystalline quality, like, the way its spines are with, like, the bony spine and then the translucent body. This card has a strong aura. Also, it's got uh, my uh, most favorite, by which I mean my least favorite, uh, effect of a weird space thing, which is just its mouth is just, like, a black hole or singularity type thing, just a void sucking you up. You hate to see it. So Psyx, Psychics, Psyx, is, like I said, level 6, 2400 attacks, zero defense. If this card is normal, special summoned, add a fish monster to from your deck to your hand, except uh, Psyx. 
Then banish fish monster from your hand to face up field. If this card is banished, you can banish a fish monster from your hand graveyard to face up field except Psyx. Special summon this card. Uh, you can only use each effect once per turn, so that does mean that you that means you cannot chain its effect into itself infinitely. Uh, that said, this is very efficient. This is great. Literally add any fish monster and then banish a fish. It's like a allure of darkness, but allure of fish. Uh, and much like actually playing Allure of Darkness, uh, you probably are using it to plus. This is great. Let's you uh, banish a fish from basically anywhere, you know, like like I said. Uh, uh, hand, graveyard, or face-up field to come back instantly. Spicy. I like this. Um, this, I think, and Keef are very good because they give you plays on your turn to set up your, like, synchro monsters that are good on your turn. Uh... Whereas, you know, a lot of the other cards are meant to play into the primary uh, gimmick of summoning on your opponent's turn. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta spread some stuff out. So, uh, this is our last main deck goatee for now. This is uh Snopios. I've heard some somebody pronounce this Snipoyus or Snipoisis. It's wrong. There's only two S's. Uh, the OCG pronounces this as Sun O Paisu uh, or Piosu uh, with a long O. I don't know if that sounds real good for for in English, but it's a it's an like a, It's a space crack and a jellyfish at the same time, and also I think a few other just kind of fish because it's uh, uh, This by the way is based on Poisson, which is French for fish. Um. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to mostly be an octopus, but you are right in that they appear to have, like, kitbashed several other effects because it's got a much more jellyfish-like crown of tentacles inside yeah, instead of, like, the beak mouth. It's also got, like, things of, like, a lot of, like, uh, reef fish. Or, right, it's, like, it's a deep sea Yeah, fish. it does have eight tentacles. Yes, it's got, like, the array of fins and the bioluminescence. No, there meant, are I meant, several like, types no, of I'm, them. I'm talking about the four fins next to the jellyfish stinger. Yeah, the, the kind of, like, like I said, the, the, I don't know exactly what those are called, but yeah, that, that spread of fins. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, like I said, definitely structurally an octopus, and there are some deep, deep sea octopi jellies and squids, but it, it borrows multiple elements. I also like that it's got, like, it's jelly, it's, a uh, it's octopus eyes, like, inside its, like, jellyfish body there, and they're ominously glowing. It's real good. Dopios. Uh, Shade of the Goatee is a level six fish, twenty one hundred attack, zero defense. During your main f or during the main phase, quick effect: you can banish two fish monsters from your hand and or graveyard. Special summon this card. So it's a dragon ruler in fish, a fish ruler, if you will. If this card special summon, target a face up card in the field. Uh, banish it when it leaves the field. If this card's banished, you can banish a fish monster from your graveyard. Add this card back to your hand. You're going to use each effect of Snopios once per turn. Uh, this is another card that's just a great part of the engine. It lets you uh, banish some fish to set up some plays, just to special summon them out. Um, if you're summoning it on your opponent's turn, this is very funny because it's a quick effect. So, like, if your opponent activates, like, a spell card that has a grave effect or something, or they activate, like, they summon a monster effect, uh, an effect monster that, like, would have a graveyard effect that you know they're going to, like, sack it off for material or something, you can be, like, quick effect, Snopios, summon. Your monster is now banished when it leaves the field. You know, uh, that's very funny, good reactive play. This is something I think I like about I do like about this deck conceptually is its ability to kind of like play around with like, you know, whose turn is it and the interruption. Uh, and even if you don't you're like if you're going first, even then it's just a free special summon to give you a level six guy. Which is good. Uh, now we're gonna get to the synchro monsters, which are uh even Biggerer and spookerer, if you'll allow. Even more crazy. Uh, our first one, then, is Arionpos. Great Serpent of the Goatee. Serpent of the Goatee in the, the TCG. The OCG is like Daija. Big Snake. Uh, so this is... Probably modeled off of a sea snake or uh, maybe a moray eel. 
Uh, both of those exist and are uh, pretty spist. Um, I do like this design because uh, it's got uh, a big scary jaw. Uh, there are several types of deep sea fish that do have just these kind of like rows and rows of spiky teeth. Uh, it's got a like cluster of tentacle tongues, which is very creepy and upsetting. Uh, it's also got four eyes, which is, you know, wild. Uh, but I do like that it's got the classic, like, s you know, snake skeleton rib trick going on as well. It's very good. Also looks like it has lightning running through its guts. It's a big Oh, one. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, funnily enough, despite its intimidating figure, um, Arion Pulse is one of their smaller synchro monsters. This is your sixth synchro. It's also got 2100 attack and uh, zero defense. Uh, it is completely generic. One tuner, one one or more non-tuner monsters. You're probably mostly making this with a two and a four, but yeah, you got your six. Uh, first of all, if this card's synchro summoned, you can banish a level six or lower fish monster from your deck. If this card's sent to the graveyard as synchro material, you can target a fish monster in your graveyard, banish this target, then add a fish of equal or lower level from your deck to your hand. You can use each effective Arian Poss once per turn. Uh, so Arian Poss is clearly meant for synchro climbing, but in the best way. On synchro summon, it is effectively like a gold sark or foolish burial but for a banish deck you can banish a fish from any fish from your deck well not any fish but any level six or lower fish uh which by the way triggers like all of your goatee effects on banish because they're just when banished um and then if you synchro climb through this which you probably will be doing because your deck is you know like i said twos fours and sixes so you climb into you know sixes eights and tens uh you just get to uh banish a fish to add a different fish Not even actually a different fish. It's eat, uh, It says add a fish monster with equal or lower level. So you can use it to grab a second copy of the same guy you banished, which once again triggers all of your effects. So yes, Arian Poss is um, extension in the uh, the greatest way. Uh, and if you're curious, um, this is a uh, anagram of uh, Opsarion, which is a uh, Greek dialect for fish. got a slightly funny name to spell because this one is Askan the Bicorned Goatee so it's a big scary goatee with two horns so the wiki says this card uh, this fish most resembles a flying fish and I do agree that it's general body shape does um that said i feel like we're taking inspiration from multiple things here uh those horns are very much remind me of narwhals actually uh, narwhal horns and it's uh got a very solid body uh i do like that this one goes back mostly to the white but with kind of like the rainbow highlights like a prism or a crystal effect very good Also, fun fact, uh, this one's name is an anagram for uh, Sakana, which is the Japanese word for fish. Yeah, look at this guy. This guy's great. Uh, so this is your eight synchro, or one of your eights, actually. I don't know if uh, they have two eights or two tens. Or is it ten and twelve? Who even knows? Um, anyway... Askan. Uh, if you're curious, chat, I don't know right now because I uh, wrote down a list. I did not double check every single card, and I'm, like I said, feeling feverish today. But this is an 8 Synchro Fish, 2700 attack, 0 defense, so decent stats for an 8. Like, not as big as Red Red Dragon Archfiend, not RDA, but bigger than a Stardust Dragon. Uh, once again, completely generic, which is I always appreciate. Even though you would probably never run this deck or run these uh, synchros outside of a fish synchro deck, you could play them in other fish synchro strategies. Uh, so this is, you know, one tuner, one more non-tuners. If this card's synchro summoned, target a fish you control and a, and a card your opponent controls, banish them. If this card is banished, uh, banish fish monsters from your graveyard, special summon this card. 
you only use each effect of uh, Ascon once per turn. Uh, this is another just good one. This is just a good card. Uh, this is definitely payoff for Synchro Summoning on your opponent's turn. You know, if you sequence your banishes correctly uh, or your effects correctly, this means you get to, you know, quick Synchro into this guy and just reset one of your fish for later and also, uh, you know, pop one of your opponent's cards. Send that, send that to the banishment. Remove their ass from the game. Uh, which can be very useful if used correctly. And uh, like a lot of their monsters, it just uh, recycles itself. And this one probably has my favorite uh, name out of all of them. Uh, our next one is... Googlim! Spear of the Goatee. Uh, that's an anagram for... Is that an L? I think it is. Mulgogi, which is supposed to be Korean for fish. I'm sure my pronunciation was bad, by the way. Uh... Now we're getting deeper in the cosmic horror or like the the cosmic uh, like Marvel comics type shit. Um, I would absolutely see this guy on a Saturday morning. So it's pr again, it's probably a giant squid. Um, because they've got like you know, uh, if you don't know, um. Giants, uh, the way squids work is they have ten limbs, so they have, uh, like, regular tentacles, and then they have their, like, really long tentacles, which have, like, bony clubs in them. Uh, Googlem here has, uh, all, oops, all bony clubs. Uh, but I don't think we can safely say that it's just a giant squid, because it's got a, uh, fish head on its body, which is pretty cool. Um with kind of like a multi-sectioned beak mouth. Uh, it's also got like conical spines, like a like a sea snail on its bottom half. Very freaky, very, very odd. But uh, I like it. He's intimidating. Sorry, Chad, I'm fanning myself briefly. Uh, so I was right, they have two eights. Uh, Google them is your other eight synchro, also 2700 zero. Uh, it, it is technically not completely generic, but it's still very open-ended. Google requires specifically a fish tuner and then one or more non-tuner monsters. So you can only run this in fish synchro decks, but you wouldn't not do that anyway. Uh, so Google them says during, during the start of the damage step of this card, it battles an opponent's monster. You can banish that opponent's monster. At the start of the damage step. During your opponent's standby phase, you can't banish this card, and then if the monsters you just, as material for this card, sick or summon, are in your graveyard, you can special summon all of them, but banish them when they leave the field. You can use each effect of Google Glim once per turn. Uh, so this is another card. This was part of the second block in Darkwing Blast. Uh, this is good. This gives you something to go on your turn if you end up going second, um, or otherwise, like, gives you, uh, like, a battle run to do. Um... Basically, you can make it on your turn if you don't want to make your 8 to waste its effect, and then just have it de-shrinker itself and go into the other 8. Um, there's also a, uh, a handful of other funny things it can do, uh, but I just like this a lot because it's like... I appreciate when, when Konami actually like thinks about deck design and goes, Okay, so this deck is good at interruption, but how do you actually close the game? Like, What, what do you do when you're on the, the, the battle phase side of the play? Uh, Google him is great for that. You know, it, it, it uh, banishes at the start of the damage step, um, and it's at the start of the damage step, so there's not a lot of interruption you can do there. Uh, it's also a non-targeting banish. It's when this card uh, battles. It is once per turn, so watch out for that. But still, that's kind of a protection effect, and like I said, I, I find it very fun. This card can desynchro itself, basically. And it's like, oh, but banish the materials, you know, when they leave the field. Uh, but that mostly doesn't matter. You'll reset them anyway. Google him. Good. Uh, that means we only have the final guy. 
where we talk about spell traps and stuff. Uh, after the synchro monster, I will probably step away for a sec, chat, because All right. I need a second. But we do have some spell traps, like I said. We can talk about white aura as well. But um, the the big one, the cover That's card, right. the boy, is uh, Fish of the Deep Beyond, aka Goatee of the Deep Beyond. Uh, I do kind of like the way the OCG translated this. It is Saihate no Gotisu, uh, Gotis of the Most Distant End. But yeah, uh, this is your 10 synchro, and uh, yeah, it's big. This one doesn't seem to necessarily specifically be any particular kind of sea creature, uh, just in general, barring from a lot of like very large creatures like sea serpents and the like. It's got a lot of the the big repeating fins we've got. It's got kind of like a mane of tentacles, which is cool. It's got a little bit of a bony crest in its face. Um, it also kind of makes me think of, of some, you know, uh, Asian water dragon-like ideas, but definitely drawn much more like a deep-sea fish. I like this. This is good. Um, lots of cosmic space dust in its gullet. I do also think, by the way, this is their, their like, literal biggest monster. Uh, I find it very fun that this one doesn't have the skeleton parts inside. It's just all goop. Oops, all space. So, uh, Goatee of the Deep Beyond is a, another Waterfish Synchro. Like I said earlier, it's level 10. Its attack is question mark, and its defense is zero. This, uh, like... Our uh, our previous card uh, is technically locked to fish, uh, but this has a very funny uh, synchro materials. This is one or more fish tuners plus one or more non-tuners. Uh, Super big. Yeah. That's that's fairly unique, but um, I do appreciate that, especially because most of your little guys are tuners. You've got, like, three tuners in this archetype. So anything that makes that level 10 easier to hit, very funny. Uh, the original attack of this card becomes 500 times the number of banished monsters, so it's uh, kind of, you know, um, a Grand Maju type effect. If this card is synchro summoned during your opponent's turn, banish all cards on the field. During the standby phase of the next turn after this card is banished from the monster zone, you can special summon this, this banished card. So, specifically, it has to be banished from your monster zone. Um... That still makes it good for, like, tag-out effects, like your guys that, you know, banish other cards, uh, you know, to, to cycle through stuff, like uh, Enoch and, and so on. Uh, but no, this is great. This is a non-targeting, non-destructing AoE banish of the entire board when synchroed on your opponent's turn. And its original attack becomes uh, 500 times the number of banished monsters. Very solid, very good. Uh... I don't think you run Necroface in Goatee because it's hard for you to banish cards that aren't fish, but there's a lot of similarity to, like, Grenmaju-type strategies where your aim is probably to make a very big Goatee of the Deep Beyond and punch very hard, and uh, that's good. Uh, I like that you have multiple ways to get it out because it, it does multiple tuners and multi allows for multiple tuners and multiple non-tuners. So you could just Synchro Climb a 2 and an 8, but you could also do, like, two 2 tuners and a 6... You could do like like two uh, through all three of your two tuners, I should say, and your four. There's a lot of funny math stuff I like in the way this card is arranged. Uh, I think the main problem here is just that like because you have to sy synchro summon on your opponent's turn to get its effect off, uh, that probably requires using your uh, goatee monster's effect as a quick effect to synchro summon. There are probably decks that can force you to do that early and play around the board wide banish. Which is probably why this deck is not supreme. But still, very solid. Uh, by the way, they use this as a promo for uh, uh, Power of the Elements, which is probably good. It's a very spicy boy. So I am going to step away for a sec. Go to the bathroom, splash some water in my face. Uh, I'll throw up my Gone Fishing text because it's very funnily appropriate for now as my standby. If only it could have been Gone Goatee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would have required a second edit, though, that I Fair was enough. not in the mood to make today. Uh, no funny assets this time. But uh, I'll be right back, chat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute and deafen up because it's just acts in here and I don't want to, you know, have you worry about talking to the people. So I'll be right back.
Hello, chat. Okay, we're back. Return. And I realized you've been doing this for uh, for over an hour. Uh, I forgot to say specifically, this is the end of the month, so uh, this is technically uh, the Patreon poll winner. Uh, I say technically because there was actually a three-way tie at the end there uh, between uh, Valkyrie, Goatee, and I think it was if I'm if it was properly alphabetical, it would probably be Trap Tricks. I think I had it alphabetical. But yeah, uh, so the tie didn't really get resolved. Um, and so, uh, while uh, Axe doesn't actually have to give me $5, uh, he said last week he would be willing to pay $5 for Goatee to win. So, uh, I, you know, we go chaos mode. It's Goatee. Uh, hopefully we will have a uh, bigger margin uh, next time, so it's an easier decision. But, you know, I, I figured we'd get in there. Goji's been on the list for a while. It's a very interesting archetype. Uh, before we get into the spell traps, I will say I think the only weakness I'm really sensing right now is even after some of that uh, sweet, sweet OCG support, um, the, the deck probably has a problem with a very linear game plan. Um... It kind of reminds me of... Obviously, I think it's a, a better deck than that, but it reminds me of the problems with uh, Ogdo Attic. Ogdo really only has the one play, which is just, you know, can you make your couple of eights or your 110 and then, like, you know, eat us the whole board and win? You know, obviously, I think um, Banishing is a little more resilient than the uh, just sending to graveyard effect you can do on Ogdo Attic, so Goatee's in a better spot there. But you're, you're still kind of at a problem where, okay, you make your level 10 synchro on your opponent's turn and blow up their board. What if that doesn't stop them? You have you don't, you don't have anything else. Uh, so there's probably some room there. Uh, so let's real quick talk about the field spell. Oops, slip that back the bottom. Uh, this card was our thumbnail art, but I'll pull it up anyway so you can see it a little clearer. Uh, it's just called uh, the most distant, deepest depths. Depths. Uh, the uh, OCG translated this as, uh, by the way, funnily enough, Saihate uh, no uh, Umi, the most distant ends of the cosmic sea. Uh, I am pretty sure that most actual Umi cards um, specifically name check that they are named Umi or count as Umi. So uh, there's not actually any archetypal overlap. It's just very funny linguistically. Uh, oh, I need to remove the Gone Fishing mark so you can see in full. Which, by the way, is another fish-related card. It's Fish Sonar. Uh, I don't think you run Fish Sonar in a goatee deck, but it's uh, funny that it works out that way. But yeah, um... The most distance, deepest depths, the DDD, says, while you control a Fish Synchro monster, this card can be destroyed or banished by card effects. So, okay, cool, it's protected. You can use the following effects once per turn. You can banish fish monster from your hand or graveyard, add a goatee from your deck to your hand. A goatee monster, I should say. Uh, if a fish monster is normal or special, while well, this card's in your graveyard, you can target a fish you control, banish it, add this card back to your hand. So, this is okay. It's a searcher, um, and it lets you banish from hand or graveyard, so basically it, it sets up your extension. Um, it still is a card that requires you to have drawn a fish in order to get started. You're probably going to do that, but I suspect there are probably people who've tried to play Goatee who have drawn hands where they've gotten, like, a copy of, like, Oops All Spell Traps, or they've gotten, like, some non-engine, and you're like, well, cool, I have a, a field spell, but I have no fish in my hand or graveyard. So I can't get my Goatee combo started. Um, also, it's cute that it has a return effect, but it also has protection. I'm not sure about that. Um... They could probably use some more spell cards. But let's talk about their traps. Uh, Loth has technically chimed in and says he's taking care of something and will hopefully be joining us. But uh, we'll see if we're still here because we are speeding quickly along. That said, their, uh, I think their spell trap art is pretty rad, so we may have a few things to say. Got. First, we've got Goatee Chain. Uh, I'm not sure what about this says Goatee Chain. Uh, but this card's still pretty cool. Uh, this is Ascon the Bicorned one. Uh, just fucking 
Pink Floyd laser light showing it up, baby. Reality is distortable. He's he's fucking glowing. It's great. I like this. Uh, also gives you a little d closer detail on his face with like the multiple eyes and stuff. It's very solid. But yeah, I, lo I love these kinds of like uh, rainbow effects, almost like a, a night bright. Rainbow bright? Which one is the board you do? I don't remember. Uh, it's an old... There are some people who are probably watching this at some point who are not old enough to get that. Um, but the like black background on neon you know, glowing color is very good. Solid effect. Uh, so, Go to Chain is a normal trap. It says, banish face-up fish. You control, especially summon a goatee monster that is banished, or in your hand, deck, or graveyard with a different original name than the card the monster you banished to activate this card. But you banish it when it leaves the field. You can only chain once per turn. Uh, since you have a, you know, quick synchro on your opponent's turn effects built in, this isn't as bad as others. Like, naturally, you're going to want to go first and set up. Uh, and this lets you, you know, get them out of your banishment. You know, a card that is banished out of your hand, deck, or graveyard. Uh, it's really flexible. It's really cool. Uh, you can only do it once per turn, so uh, use it wisely. This is searchable, obviously, but still. Uh, gotta be careful with that one. Uh, continuing on our themes, we have, uh, oh, I feel it. I feel the cosmos. Goji cosmos. It might be a light bright. I don't know. It's like the rainbow pegs. I think there were multiple things that were called that. Anyway, this is Goji cosmos. I made a reference to Katamari Damacy there. Uh, which is kind of funny because, like, uh, both of the remasters, um, like, uh, Katamari Reroll and We Love Katamari Reroll. Um, they both don't even have dubbed dialogue anymore. They're just the Japanese audio with subs. Uh, but I remember on the PS2, it was a meme. Uh, this is just uh, Godi of the Deep Beyond chilling. Doing some cosmic stuff. Uh, I love how... I know it's weird to say, but I love how how absolutely, like... You know, hex code zeros, black. The background of this is like there's not even like star points in any of the areas outside of the glow. It's just like complete darkness, and then that contrasts really well with the light. It's good, good composition. Uh, so Cosmos is another normal trap. It says you can activate, you apply these effects. Sorry, in sequence based on your number of banished fish monsters. Number one, your fish monsters can't be destroyed by battle this turn. Four, the activation of effects, activation and effects of fish monsters activated on your field can't be negated. Eight, special summon a fish synchro monster from your extra deck that is treated as a synchro summon. You can only activate one cosmos per turn. Uh, this is neat. This feels like a win more card. By the time you're going to actually have four plus fish banished to make this work, you're probably already like in a position where um, target negation doesn't matter or you've already had to play through your opponent's negates. It's cute, but it feels like a win more card. The fact that like the eight plus is just fuck you, I I fish something, I, I fish synchro. Again, neat. Not something you want to be counted on. This is like a total like bounce back card or a win more card. Like you've already run through enough of your combo to have eight fucking banished fish. Um, could be better. Uh, well, it's time for an action shot, though, because we have our uh, continuous trap card, Goti Fury. Uh, this is Askan and Guoglim fighting. Uh, I did not realize it, but yes, apparently Guoglim has a fucking Godzilla laser. That is... The scale of that is intense. Yeah, Just no. like how fucking huge they are. Yeah, this is pretty pretty big. We're doing some, some fishy fighting right now. Um, so Fury is a uh, continuous trap. It says, target one... One fish monster you control, one monster opponent controls. Banish both of them until the end of the next standby phase. So just when you flip it, it's that effect anyway. If fish monster special summon your field while any cards are banished, you can banish this card from your graveyard or face up. Spell trap zone. All fish you uh, currently control gain 100 attack for each currently banished card until the end of this turn. You can use each effect of fury once per turn. Uh, this one's not great. I like the flip effect to just, you know, set up banishment. You know, one and one banish. Uh, the attack modulation effect is cute, 
but it's only cards you currently control and only currently banished. So it seems like it's very easy to fuck up the timing and sequencing on that so that it's less effective than it could be. Like, you might fire it early and then realize you can combo for more. Also, it's only 100 attack for each currently banished card. Um, obviously, some decks in the format do rack up a big banish, but, like, even cards like Necroface and, and Gren Maju are, are cooking a little bigger than that, you know? So, uh, I, I think that is probably what holds Goatee back from being, like, a, a out-of-the-box top-tier deck is their in-archetype spell trap support is pretty basic. Your best card is probably Chain, because that lets you summon from uh, Banish Hand deck or Graveyard, basically literally anywhere. Uh, that is imminently Ashable, however. And uh, certainly, like, you know, uh, requires you to still have some extra stuff, you know, going on. Because you can't synchro. You cannot literally one-card synchro uh, unless you get 8-plus on uh, Goji Cosmos. But that means you have to have 8 Banished Fish to do that with Goji Cosmos. So, uh, they could probably use some more stuff. It's kind of weird, I want to say this, like, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but I'm to double back to it. I think the reason why Goatee isn't, like, a breakout, like, properly tiered deck is something that I know MBT and some other people who've played around with Goatee have said. It's a very linear deck. You have one big boss monster in archetype, and I don't actually know if there are any other, like, fish-focused tens that are good for you to make. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can, if you're going first and you want to, you can just make Barone. Most decks are prepared to play through one negate these days. So, like, going into Barone is not the end-all, be-all. Uh, obviously, you can access, as mentioned, there are some Sword Soul Synchros that are very good. Um, you might even be able to set up... Uh, uh, what's the Ice Shade Synchro? Is it a Garo? No, that's the main deck. Is it Garo Crassus? It's fucking... It's the... Like, Aegir Retrain. Which one is it? Gimir Aegirin, that's right. That's a that's an Aqua 10 that requires a Water Tuner. Which probably... Works... Um, as an option and definitely is a big hitter, but is not like a direct one up, you know? Like, it's not a, a, a straight like comparison. They could probably use uh, a second archetype uh, level 10. Reminds me of um, Dragoonity. Dragoonity has two sync 10s that are very good. You've got uh, uh, Ascalon and. Oh boy, which. Which weapon is the other big one? No, that's like their, their seven. Oh, it's Aridbar. Aridbar. Um, so, like, uh, Aridbar is a negate, a monster negate, uh, which also pops your opponent's back row. Um, and Ascalon is a, uh, uh, an aggro card. Uh, like, lets you blow up your opponent's board for big attacks. And then can float into the other guy. So like, right now, Goatee have a uh, a board wipe on your opponent's turn, uh, which is a very large guy, but is not necessarily going to be large enough to win the game because it's like 500 attack for each banished fish monster. Uh, actually, let me double check. Is it is does, does it have to be different names for Deep Beyond? No, it's just 500 times the number of banished monsters total. So, like, that can get pretty big. You know, you only need, um, like, 16 total monsters banished to make it 8k. Um, which is not unheard of, but still, like, that's a significant presence of both players' decks, and not every card they play is going to be monsters. So, like, 
you're not necessarily going to be able to like blow up their board, make them completely stop their turn, and then OTK with Deep Beyond. And it's only a board wipe if summoned on your opponent's turn, so if you're going second, it doesn't fucking do anything. Uh, so I think they need another level 10 that's probably more proactive, you know, for making on your turn to, like, OTK or something. But they're trying. They've got some good tools. Um, and I think that they probably do need spell traps that do something. I don't know what exactly they need to do, but there's there's some room there. Let's see. We've only been going for about an hour and a half. But I am, like I said, feeling a little under the weather. We've covered all the Gotas. All the goddies. We could talk about white and white aura, um, but I have only put like the white aura synchro monsters: um, dolphin, porpoise, monoceros, whale, and behemoth, uh, and the like regular white fish monsters. There are a, a also like a half a dozen or more spell traps that are in that archetype. I don't have listed out. We could probably put that off for a different time period. Maybe if people want to see that as a. Uh, uh, a Patreon poll results, you know? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, I think I mentioned, like, most of the big ones from the, um, the new OCG ban list. A lot of people are chomping at the bit, because, uh, well, some people say it's ban list season. People said it was ban list season at the start of this month, and can't count, because, um, it's it's like counting counting whole numbers. Uh, the the jump from one to to three is only two, not three. Three only is three if you're going from zero to three. Is I guess the best way to put it. Uh, it's it's just because it's a tier zero meta that people are really really pushing, but it'll probably still be a while. The OCG does have an April first, uh, you know, ban list, which is going to be really interesting. They're finally uh, putting title to one. Uh, they're putting Teak Boo from semi-limited to, to limited, kind of following what Master Duel has been doing uh, in the TCG in some places. Uh, they have uh, re-limited Ib, interestingly enough. So in the TCG, Ib has gone from banned to one. And while I think she's a good card, it's not actually impacting the meta right now. Uh, I don't know if Ib was ever outright uh, banned in the OCG. I don't know. But uh, she was at least previously um, uh, limited. They're putting her back to semi-limited, so they're kind of, like, stretching it out a little. Uh, the one that makes no fucking sense is SP Little Knight to two from three. People were not running three. It's a generic, you know, extender in um, Link decks. So, like, not really mattering. Uh... The Kir the high Kirin hit is weird because they went it from three to two. Uh, most decks in the OCG were only playing two anyway. Uh, Ash, Snake Eye Ash, I should say, from unlimited to semi limited is like that does probably affect the consistency. And I mentioned earlier they put uh, sinful spoils to one, but you still have two copies, uh, so it's still pretty searchable and, and playable. Um, they've put Pot of Extravagance back to two, which is just so funny. Uh, the funny thing is the OCG actually starting to realize, finally, after, like, 20 fucking years, that Kaiser Coliseum might be a problem card, uh, because that has been showing up a lot in Tenpai lists. Um, uh, so they've put it from three to two. Uh, and then the unlimits are very funny in the OCG, so... Uh, first of all, they've unlimited change of heart. Very funny. Uh, Infernity Launcher is unlimited, because Infernity probably wouldn't actually do anything. Uh, this is something we talked a lot about in previous episodes, but uh, Rite of Aramisir is finally gone from semi to, to unlimited again, back to three. Uh, Loth will be happy to know that uh, the OCG has, which uh, may end up going in uh, Master Duel as well, uh, the OCG has finally uh, unlimited uh, Dark Worm. <laughs> Supreme uh, King Dragon Dark Worm was still at two. Uh, they've also put Gearsu from 2 to 3. And the big one is um, we are unbanning and unlimiting Summon Sorceress in the uh, OCG. But this is because she is receiving an errata. So Summon Sorceress was banned because previously she let you basically summon whatever the fuck you like out of your deck. 
Uh, now they are uh, eroding her, so she is a Link 3 Dark Spellcaster with 2400 attack. She's got the Triangle Arrows. Her materials are specifically uh, two plus non-tokens with the same type, so you need to be playing like monotype decks. Uh, you can only use your effect once per turn, so it's hard. And then it says, if this card is Link Summoned, you can special summon a monster from your hand in defense position to your opponent's zone this card points to, but negate its effects. So this prevents you from uh, using it to Ibli Lock, which I believe is one of the main problems with this card. Uh, also, presumably, you can't use it to Gimmick Puppet Lock as well. That will actually be a serious concern because Gimmick Puppets are about to make a very consistent FTK engine. Then your uh, your action might be good, by the way, chat, because their uh, field spell's fucking crazy. The Gimmick Puppet field spell is Gimmick Puppets are, aren't affected by monster effects that aren't Xyz effects. Crazy. Gimmick puppets are so bad that you can literally print whatever. Uh, but also, uh, it says, then you can special summon one monster with the same type as that monster from your deck and defense position, but negate its effects. And if you do that, you can't special summon for the rest of the turn except the same type as the monster you special summon from deck. So, uh, Summon Sork is no longer good at fetching out, like, generic floodgates or other weird shit, um, especially because they're both negated. But it is forced to uh, type lock you, so it only goes in certain decks. It'll still probably be good, but it's definitely no longer ban worthy. It's just a weird form of extension, and requires you to have a lot of uh, monsters left, basically. But yeah, that is the Gotus. Uh, so I would say. We'd be back next week with uh, the ones next in our line, Runic. But, uh, and next week's show is going to be April 2nd, funnily enough. Um, and while like I mentioned this in a tweet, because um, we are between games right now, I'll see if I can get uh, lucky to be down for like a weird one-off for April 1st. Probably wouldn't be like an actual prank on you guys, but you know, like do something different, like... Uh, this would be Yu-Gi-Oh! related. Maybe I can uh, get him to agree to do the um, second part of Can Lucky Guess If Yu-Gi-Oh! Cards Are Good, which I've had prepped for, like, several months. I've had I mean, the list ready. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see if he wants you to do it. You put in some more bait cards there. Uh, I don't know. There's already a decent list. I've had the list for Fair. a while. Um, but, like I said, anyway, it would be a funny teach... switch-up. That or teach Lucky how to play. Actually, are there any rabbit-based decks? Not really. Uh, if there was, I guess we could teach her. I feel like that'd be the bit. Teach Lucky how to play rabbits. Nah, we won't get into that, because that would be... That would require even more pre-setup. I'd, I'd rather keep it simple. But the yes, second sir. will be close to April Fool's, so we could do another uh, special episode, and I'm thinking of doing that. Um, I uh, Unfortunately, because we're a little light on the brain trust today, uh, I can't like pitch any ideas to them, so I'll have to get back to them over the week. But I'm thinking either come up with some kind of, like, because they're very popular, uh, come up with some kind of weird tier list type video to do, or uh, probably more likely, given our group, um, do a uh, another like a standard issue fail betrayal with like you know this kind of format of this thing and cards and the chat box and stuff. Uh, but for something that's not Yu-Gi-Oh, um, I have two ideas. Uh, one is uh, for me to collect a list, uh, like a, a series of images of what people think are uh, quote unquote the best and worst uh, video game box arts. Uh, or alternatively, we could branch out because this is a very popular uh, card game. And it is one I technically know a little about. Uh, we could, uh, among ourselves, uh, gather up what people on the internet think are the best and worst Pokemon card, uh, TCG card arts. So I will, um, obviously, if you're watching this either live or later, uh, let your thoughts be known in the chat and the comments. Uh, but I will probably bring it up to the, the group over the next week and see if we can't get something funny going on there as well. But otherwise, uh, our next in the series of deck build packs is to actually talk about Runic. Haha. But uh, I think that's going to be everything for today. Like I said, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a little low juiced. I'm going to go coordinate a commander game. Yeah, uh, so we're going to get on out of here. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, for, for Goti. Uh, good to talk about these guys and get them, not out of the way, but but get them done finally, because they are a very, it's a it's a very unique look, and it's a very specific archetype design. This is the kind of stuff we usually like here on Fatal Betrayal. 
It's got a very distinct theme, which uh, is involved both in their look and their play style. This is what people play Yu-Gi-Oh for. Um, now we just need, you know, Konami to keep releasing cards in the OCG to make this deck super good. Where's where's our uh, goatee of the Beatrice? Goatee of the No-Nos. Huh. Anyway. Be seeing you guys next time. Uh, presumably we'll be back tomorrow for more Final Fantasy XIV. Finally an Endwalker. Got some stuff to do in Labyrinthos. But... Uh, I don't know, like, how long that'll go on for, depending on how I feel with these frickin' oak trees, but we should be on schedule to actually at least do some of it. So, be sure to tune in. And, uh, consider pre-ordering Dawn Trail, available now. Alright, that's everything I got. Please, fire up those likes and comments. Make sure you're subbed to the channel if you see this one out of nowhere. Uh, we have a huge backlog if you're new. Been doing this show for, like, two years. Probably getting close to three years. I don't actually know when our anniversary is. Um... But, you know, there's a big playlist of, of backlogs of these uh, streams and stuff you can check out. And uh, consider supporting us on Patreon to vote in the polls and the whatnot. So, uh, we'll be seeing you later. Good night, everybody.